Today, we will decide your profession and the level of success that you have in your profession using some secret tools which you have never heard in any astrology video. And you know what they are called? They are called astrology basics. <laughs> no Parasari technique, no Gemini techniques, no Vrigu techniques, no Nadi techniques, no Kepi techniques, no uh, whatever, you know, X, Y, Z. <laughs> Just using basics of astrology. Yes, we can predict that. You don't need any fancy uh, out-of-the-world tool. All right? So, how can you predict? So, these are 10 steps to help you predict. But these are not like uh, successive steps. You know, you can apply them in any order. Okay? But no matter in which order you do them, you must do all of these or at least 7 or 8 of them. Okay? And again, uh, you may have some other techniques, uh, that's fine. So, you can add all this to your prediction techniques, okay? Your accuracy will improve much, much more. Now, the first thing that you need to do is, see, before I go into this, you have to understand why these 10, 10 rules I am teaching you. Because they will help you combine clues in the chart. So, astrology is all about combinations, not just of planets, but of everything. So, if you can combine everything that you see, only then you can uh, understand where the chart is flowing. So, the agenda of this video is to tell you how to do a comprehensive career analysis or a consultation. Okay. Now, number one, and this is non-negotiable. This has to be done for any area of life, not just career. And this is non-negotiable. You need to check the Lagna Lord. You need to check the Lagna, the Sun and the Moon. These four. Okay. Now, now, if you have sun or moon or lagnesh in lagna, you know, then it will be like three only. Or if your uh, lagna lord is uh, sun or moon, so if you are cancer or Leo, then it will be again three, right? And if your lagna lord is in either sun, moon, and they are also in the ascendant, then you ju just have two, right? But nonetheless, you need to see all the four. This, These four planets will give you an inherent idea of what the person is. So, for example, if... Uh, among the four, there are prominent fiery planets, like, you know, for example, Sun, Mars is in the ascendant. Again, this is not a video for every ascendant, for every house. That's not possible to do here, okay? But I'm trying to tell you, rather than uh, giving you the fish, I'm trying to teach you how to fish, okay? Although, I don't need fish, nor do I support, all right? Disclaimer. <laughs> but, now here, you need to understand that if there are fiery planets, so suppose Sun or Mars is in the ascendant, or the, uh, you know, Sun, Mars, you know, they are in some kind of, you know, fiery signs like, you know, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So, if these kind of traits are there, then the person has a lot of fiery energy and the person likes to control and dominate and, you know, be like a manager or a boss. So, then you know the Agni Tattva is very high. So, then, you know, uh, should the person go into, uh, like, you know, some government service like, you know, IAS or politics you know, or uh, some managerial role. So, some leadership role can be there if these four, uh, if these four indications are very strongly indicating fiery elements, okay. If they are indicating uh, are the elements, then it can be, you know, something related to finance or mathematics. If you know, the airy element is prominent, you know, like Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, then business and uh, consulting, all this, you know, wherever there is dealing with people, that's important, okay? And if the water signs, the water element is prominent, like uh, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, then you know that uh, hospitality, you know, uh, psychology, could uh, be occult sciences, all these things, spirituality, uh, all these things, you know, hotel, resorts, spa, all these things, you know, luxury, all this, anywhere there is indulgence, those things are uh, recommended for the person to do, okay? So, this is step one. Then, step number two, you need to check the 10th house. Which planets are impacting the 10th house? Which are uh, which are the uh, lordships of these planets? You know, so, for example, if somebody has Saturn in the 10th, which house has Saturn rules as per uh, the Lagna, okay? So, therefore, the planets which are in the 10th house, during the Dasa of these planets, there is possibility of uh, great promotions or, you know, big money coming into their professional life, okay? So, therefore, planets in 10th and in the 11th, they are the most powerful planets. So, these two houses have to be seen, especially 10th and also 11th. So, if a person has too many planets in the 10th 
and in the 11th or at least in either one of them then the person will not be doing small things in life the person will do big things okay in general okay uh, but there is another level to this which i'll explain so suppose a person has like uh, three four five plans then you could tell them that career will be very important in your life you cannot just uh, do something you know you will not be happy you will be like i want to do something big and if the person has like five six parts you know the person is very 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 strong workaholic and if more than that you know if seven eight plants are there then that's all the person has in his life you know like just work okay so that will decide how much successful the person will be how much commitment and yeah everything you know it is like how much does a person want to be successful to gain recognition so by that is how you will watch this factor using the 10th and 11th then you need to see the 10th lord the 10th lord the 10th lord uh, will tell you uh, what is the default indication of the person when it comes to specifically their professional life so for example if the 10th lord is in a particular place then the person might want to do something related to that area by default in his or her profession okay so that will give you a direct hint of the profession but again you have to kind of match all this so for example if you know the 10th lord is in the 10th but sun moon uh, ascendant lord you know they are not indicating fiery elements then what will happen is this person would like to take up some managerial role but it will be difficult for him or her to become the ceo of a company because the lagna lord sun moon they are not indicating so that will kind of so when you mix all of them together you will actually know what is the status of the person and to what extent the person can be successful next number 4 most important after point number 1 this is most important the 10th lord's nakshatra and nakshatra lord so so suppose 10th lord is in rohini nakshatra rohini is related to creativity beauty you know fashion makeup and all this and if the person as i if you remember in beginning if i i, I said right if your uh, cancer scorpio pisces or 4th house 8th house 12th house there prominent planets are there and the 10th lord is in rohini then bang on you can say this person will go into you know some creative sector okay so and the nakshatra lord lord of rohini is moon where is moon if moon is well placed phenomenal this is for career okay if moon is in the first 10th or 11th when your 10th lord is in rohini then you are blessed okay well, this is fantastic actually okay now number 5 now you need to see that okay the chart is indicating something but is the person naturally talented to do all these things on his own or the person has you know talents which uh, he or she is carrying from their previous lifetimes for that you need to check the navamsha trines so for example if uh, mars is in the navamsha trines you know 159 then the person might have traits related to cooking or you know astrology or you know army and all these things you know venus is there painting could be there you know mercury is there uh, writing can be there if jupiter is there you know knowledge of maths and physics can be there if you know yeah sun is there dancing could be there so moon will give you traits like you know medicine and all this so now if you see that the chart is saying something and the avamsha trines are already indicating that the person already has traits then you can say that okay just try to go into this sector and you will be able to do it effortlessly because you already have the talents from your previous lifetimes you know you don't have to do much it's like just it's like a royal road for you okay so these traits have to be used the traits from d1 have to be used in the d10 okay don't forget that now number 6 you need to check the dashamsha chart so in the dashamsha you need to check the d10 lagna the first thing So what is going on in the Dashamsha lagna? Because the planet in the Dashamsha lagna will kind of activate the uh, the Dashamsha chart. You know? So, for example, if a person has uh, Jupiter in D10, for example, D10 lagna, then the person might want to go into you know finance or you know wealth management. Could also be interested in physics or yeah, mathematics or anything like that. But you need to check the D9 uh, you know, if that trait is there. because the d10 will give you interest and the d9 will give you talents okay so if a person is asking you if a person has jupiter in the first house of the d10 and the person wants to go and do a phd in physics so if the person asks you 
should I go and do this? I'm interested. Then you need to check the D9. If in the D9, Jupiter is somehow linked with their trines, you know, in 159 or, or yeah, with a fifth lord, Lagna lord or ninth lord or something to do with that. Okay. So then this is fantastic. Then you can say you will complete like your PhD in three years rather than, you know, five years or 10 years sometimes. Okay. But don't ignore the Lagna of the D10. Then the 10th lord of your Dashamsha chart the 10th lord of your D10 chart will tell you literally what circumstances you will encounter while you know your work is going on, okay? So for example, if your 10th uh, lord of your D10 is in the 5th house of your D10, it might happen that you always have to deal with subordinates, your assistants, you know, your secretary and all this. So you need to have a good relationship with them, okay? Because that's your literal work environment. Okay, so then you can suggest, okay, you can become a professor of physics, but your primary work will be to deal with subordinates, okay? So then you narrow down and you using the initial factors, you can uh, identify and know what exactly will be the level of the person. So within, within a, as a professor of physics, will this person be interested in education only or the person would want to become the vice chancellor of the university or whatever okay so that that is something you have to watch from the previous factors that we have discussed okay then number eight you have to discuss see your amatya karaka in the d1 chart the amatya karaka is the planet with the second highest degree so first the highest is atma karaka and i have a lot of videos on atma karaka atma karaka in d1 d9 d60 you know so please watch them okay atma karaka the whole series i have completed okay for all houses, okay, so please watch the Atma Karak. And now the next second highest is Amatya Karak. That planet signifies career because Amatya Karaka is like a minister. Atma Karaka is like the king, okay. So the minister, the Amatya Karaka will tell you what, what are your traits which, are, which you are carrying uh, from your previous lifetimes, you know, from your previous uh, career uh, experiences in your previous lifetimes, okay. So those traits can also help you. So suppose you are seeing that a person is very much interested in creative work and the Amatya Karaka is also in, you know, the fifth house or it's in Rohini or, you know, it is in some other creative nakshatra like Purva Falguni. And the fourth, eighth, twelfth, these houses are also prominent. Then you can say, bang on, you can, you know, go and do something in hospitality, creativity, you know, like painting, dance, art, whatever it is, okay. And, you know, imagine if Surya is also in the Navamsha, Navamsha trines, then, you know, this person might like dancing, okay. There are many other indications, but I'm just giving an example. Okay, now don't start like, you know, in the comments, oh, my son is here. It's not like that. You know, just an example I'm giving you. Okay. So uh, when you, uh, now when you know that, then you can suggest, okay, within creativity, you can, you know, go into dancing, you know, you can uh, showcase your talents as a dancer. And then if the person of third house is prominent, they can get into Instagram, YouTube. So you, you have to see all this. Okay. Then exactly you can know what the person should be doing. The number nine is very important. You need to check the Ghatni Karaka, okay? Or you could say Gnati Karaka as the proper Sanskrit pronunciation. So what is this planet? This is the second lowest, uh, the planet with the second lowest degree. So within the Jamini Karakas, you have the planet with the least degree that is called Dara Karaka, okay? And then just a bit more than that, you have the Gnati Karaka, okay? So that planet shows obstacles, uh, challenges, you know, legal troubles and, you know, enemies and all this, okay? So, where is the Gnati Karaka placed? You know, what, what is going on with the Gnati Karaka? What kind of obstacles is the Gnati Karaka giving? If the Gnati Karaka is in a very prominent position like 10th or 11th, then the person might go into law because the person or medicine or becoming a doctor because then the person has to keep dealing with conflicts lifelong, okay? So, then you know your job is to, you know, deal with enemies and diseases and all this, okay? Now, of course, everybody who has the Gnati Karaka in 10th or 11th does not mean they will become a millionaire lawyer or attorney or somebody like that, okay? But I'm just trying to give you an example to tell you. And sometimes the Gnati Karaka is placed in a position, you know, like it is with the 10th Lord. Then also, you know, it is, you know, like uh, enemies and all problems, you know, so will always be a part of life. Or in some charts, you know, the Gnati Karaka is not in a prominent position. So then, you know, the person does not like too many conflicts, you know, in uh, their profession. And the person wants a bit of like, you know, easygoing life kind of. Okay, so then you need to suggest, you know, some 
uh, career where there's, you know, like struggle is there, but it's not like a bloodbath, you know, like uh, something like maybe IT or finance, you know, consulting, like it's okay. It's relatively peaceful. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's relatively peaceful. You don't have to go and fight and, you know, it's not like uh, you have to fight, but not like literally. Okay. So, and last but not the least, you need to check the Karakas or the 10th house, Sun, Saturn and Mercury. Okay, so if sun is very powerful, then the person will get a lot of name and fame. If Mercury is very strong, the person will be very skillful. If Saturn is very strong, the person can work very hard, okay? So suppose, now why do you need to see the Karakas? Because if the person is asking you, should I go into this field, where a lot of responsibility has to be taken, a lot of big decisions have to be taken, then the person should have a strong sun, otherwise you should say no. And if the person wants to go to an area where a lot of technical analysis is required and a lot of, you know, like minute details are important, then Mercury has to be strong. And if the person wants to go in an area where there's a lot of hard work, where the person will not see results, you know, for two, three, four, five years, and only then there could be results, then Saturn has to be very powerful, okay? So do not ignore these three players. They will also help you in finalizing what career you should choose. And last but not the least, this is bonus number 11, but this is equally important compared to the overall chart, which is your supportive dashas. If your dashas are not supportive, then you need to see when the supportive antar dasha or ma dasha is coming. So planets associated with the 10th or 11th will give you maximum gains in your profession. The 2nd and 6th will also, but not that great. And planets in uh, 8th, 12th, and sometimes 6th also, they are Dustana houses, so they can uh, create problems in your profession. So, you need to see the overall chart, and then you need to see how the upcoming 4 or 5 Mahadashas, you know, these 50 years are. And accordingly, you should answer. So, if the person is asking you, you know, some fancy questions, like, you know, oh, will I be a millionaire one day? And if you see... Uh, the chart and the dashas are not very good. Me, you have to say no. I'm sorry, you will not become. Maybe, <laughs> okay. Or you may become, but in a very later part of your life, you know, like in the 60s, 70s, you know, and uh, you may not be getting that in your 30s or 40s. Okay. And if somebody has a very exceptional chart, then yes, you can become a millionaire, even in your 20s, in your teens, or in your 30s. Okay. But if you, in general, if you have an above average chart, you will become a millionaire uh, in your 50s, at least this is what I've seen. And if it is much above average, then 40s. And it is great, like fantastic, then in your 30s. And if it is exceptional in your 20s and very rare cases, by 18, 19, 20, you are a millionaire. Okay, Very rare, like very handful of cases. Okay, So by seeing all this, you have to gauge what is the strength of the chart and the dashas will ultimately tell you how this this will go up and down, up and down, up and down. All right. Thank you so much for your patience. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you are new for personalized consultations, you can always visit my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Take care. Jai Siaram.